Bismillah wa salatu wa ala Rasulullah. Dear students, assalamu alaikum. This is Muhammad al Khamali again. Uh, in this lesson, we are, uh, we are going to complete the grammatical rule uh, on page 56. Okay. Uh, the second part of the grammatical rule, or the first part was about past perfect. Past perfect. Now we are going to deal with the can't, could, couldn't, must, may, or might. These models are using uh, to make suppositions, okay, make predictions about something. For what? To reach a conclusion. So we are going to make suppositions and to draw conclusions or reach conclusion. Okay, um, let's take them uh, as this grouping, okay? May, might, and could express possibilities, something that might happen. You are not sure, but it's possible to happen. Must expresses strong probability. So it's also a possibility, but it's a strong one. You can make sure of this one. The data, the, the data that you have uh, makes you sure from uh, this probability to be happened, okay? Can't and couldn't express very strong likelihood, likelihood uh, that something isn't true, okay? Let's see this example. Um, let's imagine that there is a guy, look, at something in the sky, he doesn't make sure what is this something, uh, this thing. He said it can't be a balloon. Why he said that? Why he uh, said it can't be a balloon? Okay, because he draw this conclusion from the shape of the object he see uh, or, or he saw in the sky. Balloons aren't shaped like that, so it can't be a balloon because balloon can't shaped like that. So what could uh, what could it be? Then he si uh, then he said it might be a glitter. It might be a glitter. This is a glitter, okay? This is a glitter, okay? But he draws another conclusion. What is it? But glitter don't fly vertically. So the object he see or he looked at is flying vertically, not horizontally. It must be a helicopter. So we have some suppositions. The first one, the shape. The second one, that this object is flying vertically. So the conclusion, it must be a helicopter. So he make a strong probability using must using must. Uh, in this exercise, we are going to do more practice about this grammatical rule. Let's read number one, or let's first start with the uh, instruction. Complete the sentences using can't, must, or might. Okay, you haven't eaten all day, you be starving. So you talk to someone and you say, you haven't eaten all day. So you can draw a conclusion, a strong one, that he, that you must be starving. You must be starving, very hungry. Starving means very hungry, okay? That's joking. That's, or Pat is joking. Pat's joking. She be serious. So we have joking here, we have the opposite, serious. The suitable model here is can't, can't be serious. But joking, she can't be serious. Ahmed has studying all afternoon. He be tired by now. As in number one, the guy haven't eaten all day, so he must be starving. Ahmed has been studying all afternoon. He must be tired by now, okay? So we draw our conclusions according to the suppositions or assumptions that we have here. I am not sure of the way there. 
let's ask my father. So in this case, you don't know uh, the right directions for a certain place and you want to ask your father. He drive us there and you want to ask him to drive you, uh, drive, uh, you there. So it's a possibility. So we can use he might drive us here because he might refuse or might accept uh, to to drive uh, to drive you there. I can't find my keys anywhere. I have lost them. So if you can't find your keys, so what? Uh, where are they? They must or I must have lost them. Who's at the door? Number uh, number six. Who's at the door? It be Maryam. She's abroad with her parents. So, do you think there is a possibility that Maryam will be at the door? But he said here, she is abroad with her parents. So it can't. It can't be Maryam. She is abroad with their parents. You can stop the video now to copy or uh, to copy the answers in your book then play the, f uh, the video back. Here we have the last part of our lesson. Okay, Here we have the last part of our lesson today. Um, in this lesson, uh, in the listening part, uh, we have two strange events and complete the chart. We need to complete the chart. The first event happens or happened at Erica's house, okay? And the other one happened in a farm. A ranch means a farm, okay? A ranch means a farm, okay? Now we are going to listen to the first one. I will repeat it twice and try to take notes. You are not supposed to understand every word of the audio materials. Try just to take notes for some of the, as you see, the the important information. Page 58. 5. Listening. A. Listen to the two strange events and complete the chart. Write the strange events in the What Happened column. Erica Schwartz. I'd invited a new friend for breakfast. While we were drinking our coffee, my guest asked if I wasn't going to introduce the gentleman who had previously been in the dining room. I said it must have been my husband, Joe, and I went to look for him. But the person had disappeared. My friend assured me she had seen a man who was wearing dark pants, a white shirt, and a black tie. That night, I told my husband about it, but then we forgot all about the incident. Two weeks later, my ten-year-old daughter woke up and saw a man standing at the foot of her bed, staring at her. We told her she must have had a bad dream. Several nights later, we heard noises of chairs being moved around in the dining room. Joe went downstairs to investigate. The chairs had been moved from their places, but there was no one there. As soon as he climbed back into bed, the noise started again. We lived with those noises for more than a year, and some of the guests who slept in our house swore they had seen a man who wore dark pants, a white shirt, and a black tie. In the end, we had to sell the place and move out. Fred and Mildred McCann Fred and Mildred McCann had finished rounding up the cattle and were heading home after a long and extremely hot day. It was already dark by the time they got to the edge of the woods that surrounded their property. Suddenly, they noticed a strange glow coming from the bushes about 100 yards away. Could it be sparks from a fire? A fire at this time of the year would be catastrophic. Mildred and Fred got on their horses and rode to the spot. 
as they approached a clearing in the middle of the trees, they saw hundreds of tiny lights flickering in the bushes. They looked like miniature stars. B. Write your own idea okay. about why it happened. Now you are going to listen to the audio material again. And as you see, we have uh, two events, Eric's house and Fred and Melder Ranch. Okay, listen again and try to fill in with certain notes or certain important notes. Page 58. 5. Listening. A. Listen to the two strange events and complete the chart. Write the strange events in the what happened column. Erica Schwartz. I'd invited a new friend for breakfast. While we were drinking our coffee, my guest asked if I wasn't going to introduce the gentleman who had previously been in the dining room. I said it must have been my husband, Joe, and I went to look for him. But the person had disappeared. My friend assured me she had seen a man who was wearing dark pants, a white shirt, and a black tie. That night, I told my husband about it, but then we forgot all about the incident. Two weeks later, my ten-year-old daughter woke up and saw a man standing at the foot of her bed, staring at her. We told her she must have had a bad dream. Several nights later, we heard noises of chairs being moved around in the dining room. Joe went downstairs to investigate. The chairs had been moved from their places, but there was no one there. As soon as he climbed back into bed, the noise started again. We lived with those noises for more than a year, and some of the guests who slept in our house swore they had seen a man who wore dark pants, a white shirt, and a black tie. In the end, we had to sell the place and move out. Fred and Mildred McCann. Fred and Mildred McCann had finished rounding up the cattle and were heading home after a long and extremely hot day. It was already dark by the time they got to the edge of the woods that surrounded their property. Suddenly, they noticed a strange glow coming from the bushes about 100 yards away. Could it be sparks from a fire? A fire at this time of the year would be catastrophic. Mildred and Fred got on their horses and rode to the spot. As they approached a clearing in the middle of the trees, they saw hundreds of tiny lights flickering in the bushes. They looked like miniature stars. B. Right? No. I will show you... Some information that I had take from the uh, audio material. For Eric's house, people saw a man in a dark pants with shirt and a black tie in Eric's house or Erica's house. Erica and her husband also heard noises in the night. Okay. This is the information. Okay. This is what happened information. Okay. Now you need to guess or speculate. What happened? What possible happened? Or what's the real reason behind this man? Uh, Fred and Mildred Ranch, okay, they saw bright glow from some bushes, okay, in the forest. As they got closer, they saw thousands of tiny lights on the bushes, okay. Now you need to stop the video and uh, write these notes in what happened column then try to guess what is the the main reason behind each of these events that's all for today's uh, we are we are going to meet you inshallah next time in another lesson assalamu alaikum